If you are one of those developers who doesn't know about the JavaScript modules or you want to improve your understanding about them, then you should watch this video to learn about different kinds of module specifications. Most of the JavaScript interviews have questions on modules so be sure to watch this video till the end. Also, if you are new to this channel, then I would suggest you to subscribe and you will stay updated with fresh videos on a regular basis. So in the very initial days of JavaScript programming, the language was limited to writing code for small snippets and scripts which we used to load indiscriminately without any system. We used to hack together various scripts as long as they were working without any regard to what was actually needed and what parts of JS code actually needed to be exposed. Today, almost every web application runs on JavaScript and so much so that JS or its variants now make up to nearly 70-80% to of web application programming logic. Even in Node applications, JavaScript needs to be maintained and used by following proper standards. This advancement in JavaScript language and its use gave birth to requirement of subdividing entire JavaScript codebase into meaningful components or modules which can be loaded as and when needed and not loading the rest of the stuff. Node.js always had the capability to load JavaScript modules based on our requirement. There are module specifications such as CommonJS and AMD with their own characteristic way of loading and exporting modules. Let's talk about all of these different module specifications and libraries which are meant for module loading in a JavaScript application. CommonJS modules are used in many places such as with Node applications. CommonJS uses require to load modules and module.exports to export them. On its Wikipedia page, you can find out more info about the CommonJS modules such as their specific versions and the different libraries which uses its implementation. Also, CommonJS module code needs to be transpiled because it cannot be understood by browsers. AMD or asynchronous module definition is a way of exporting the modules and loading them asynchronously in the browsers. Also don't confuse this AMD with the company which makes graphic cards and processors. The AMD specifications defines only a single function called as define. Here id is the id of the module. The dependencies is an array with a collection of names of modules which this module depends upon. Also the dependencies must be resolved before this module is evaluated. Third argument factory is a function which can return the module or it can be an object which is directly as the module itself. For example over here the my module is the name of the module or the id of the module, require is the dependency within an array and this function is going to return the module as the value. This module can then be loaded using a require function. If the dependencies are not available within a form of this array, then within the factory function, the dependent modules are the ones which are loaded by using the required function. Also require.js is the library which implements the AMD specification. So do check that out to get to know more about require.js and how it can be used if you are not already using it. Now let's talk about the ES6 modules and it is really important to know about them and understand them because nowadays so many different concepts and logic are based on the fact that if you have been using the ES6 modules or not. So in its simplest form an ES6 module is a piece of JavaScript code contained within a script. There are two main features of an ES6 module. A strict mode is automatic within the module and import and export can be used to import and export the modules. If you want to make public any item such as a function like this one, then you will have to add the export keyword before it. We can export multiple modules as well as import multiple modules from a single module file. Like over here, these two functions are being exported from this module and in app.js, we can import them as well either one of them or both of them by providing their names after the import keyword. 
There is an excellent article which you can read to learn about the ESX modules in a very detailed manner. The link is there in the description. Learning about the different kinds of module systems can be time consuming and tiresome and for the most part does not make much sense but still you will have to do it at some point and learn at least the popular ones like node modules and ESX modules which I think are mostly used. There are some module libraries like Webpack which brings in amazing concepts in the process of module loading such as tree shaking, dependency graphs and many more but then using these concepts and logics depends upon which kind of module is specification that we are using. For example, when we are using tree shaking then we cannot use the common JS specification of loading modules. We have to rely upon the ES6 way of the loading the modules by using the import and export keywords. So that would be everything in this video about JavaScript modules and different module specifications and libraries. I am Nitej and I will see you next time. Till then, stay safe and have fun.